Good morning, brothers. I'm walking on a trail this morning and I was uh, making a video for a client about a subject and it just brought another subject to mind in the process of taking my walk. And I wanna to talk to you about being hysterical. You know, I don't know about you, but <clears throat> when I was growing up, I can remember the movie Police Academy. Um, you know, like I think it was one, two, and three. Movies like Revenge of the Nerds. And I remember in, in our neighborhood language, we would call these these movies hysterical. And it was our way of saying, oh, this is extremely funny. Just, just dying with laughter. But you know, the word hysterical, even though we talk about it as related to humor, it doesn't mean that. It actually derives from hysteria, which if I'm not mistaken, I think in Latin, kind of means of the womb. And so throughout history, the word hysteria was what people would describe when a woman was kind of acting out of the womb. And hysteria being just kind of like ah, what we would call, you know, a wife NATO or being in a feminine storm, hysteria, right? And so an interesting thing happened with hysteria is that in the Victorian age, you know, which is often characterized as basically a, a period of, of humanity where people were deeply ashamed of their sexuality and to a degree really tried to blunt um, their gender differences. You had this idea where women would be hysterical and because men had so suppressed the masculine tip of the spear, if it were, that what a woman would do when she was hysterical is she would go to a doctor who would cure her from her hysteria. Now, this is really interesting and so paradoxical and ironic because the shame involved in sexuality, what, what they actually did is they basically went and got fingered by their doctor, a woman when she was like this, right? And not to be crass, but this is what led to the advent or the creation of the vibrator. The vibrator was created as a medical device for doctors during the Victorian era to use to relieve women of hysteria. Basically to be, you know, taking the job of what a doctor would do the good old fashioned way before that. So I'm kind of really puzzled by this because why did he need to do that? He needed to do it because there was some realization or acknowledgement that when a woman is like this, what she needs is actually the sexual presence of a man. She actually needs to be penetrated. She needs to be, to feel the full force of an unapologetic man in all of his sexual strength. But because of what was going on in the Victorian era and just the ideas about both gender and sexuality, men were kind of really not able to do this. Way too uncertain about themselves and because of their shame about their sexual being, they were basically not doing this, this natural thing of relieving women from their hysteria. So here's my question to you. Do you see people being hysterical today? Aren't we not living in a way where people are, are kind of in mass experiencing hysteria? I think it's fair to say that at least here in the US, Western culture in general, the majority of our culture is living an hysteria existence on a day-to-day -day basis, just completely ah, losing their shit in a feminine storm. It feels to me like culture has actually assumed basically the role of the hysterical woman who's feeling all of the wildness from her womb and there's no man to penetrate her. The men have all been basically blunted 
either by shame, maybe not about their sexuality, but about their masculinity, or some feeling of, I have no idea what to do, or because they've grown impotent and limp from basically substituting true loving sexual intimacy with cheap alternatives like porn and and wanking, right? And so men don't, men are not penetrating in our culture. And as a result, we have more hysteria, tons of it, too much of it, right? And so what are our options, right? Do we just, do we just develop the new contemporary version of a cultural vibrator? Is that what we do? Where we basically just kind of leave culture to its own devices and say, here, figure it out, right? Just kind of pleasure yourself, see if you can make it work. Or do we learn a lesson from the Victorian men and say, this is not okay with us. And it's time for me to basically fuck the culture wide open with our unapologetic masculine selves. For me, this guy, I'm totally convinced that we need to step up to the plate. We need to be completely and unapologetically masculine. No more apologizing for our penetrative desires. And I'm not talking about just sex. I'm talking about our way of being in the world. We need to actually do what we're made to do, which is to take action, to fill, to subdue, to multiply, right? To have dominion over. When we do that, we are penetrating. And when we're penetrating, the result is no more hysteria. So if you agree with me, if you believe that what our culture really needs is less hysteria, then I want to invite you to basically not settle for a culture that needs a vibrator. I want you to become so unapologetically your masculine self that you do your part in your community and your family to be the natural and best option for eliminating hysteria. Hope you'll join me and I look forward to hearing exactly how that works out for you. All right, brother. Love you. Take care.